welcome back to my Transformers Animated Episode Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at the third episode of Season 2, Mission Accomplished. In this episode, the Autobots are being recalled back to Cybertron, and Starscream returns and tries to take out Megatron. This episode begins with Ironhide under attack by the Decepticons. Ironhide to Ultra Magnus! We're under attack by Decepticon forces! They came out of nowhere! One space bridge is destroyed! Request immediate backup! I'm not a huge fan of this Ironhide voice. To me, it sounds like a young fan at a TFCon script reading. Not to be too harsh on those who actually build up the courage to go and audition in front of a huge crowd of people. That takes a lot of guts. Trust me, I've tried it. This animated version of Ironhide definitely seems to be a younger take on the character, when usually Ironhide is portrayed as a gruff older bot. What the heck is this? A little added protection. But wouldn't the cannon have been simpler? Quit your whining, Ironhide, or we'll take it back. Maybe they made Ironhide younger in order to reflect how Optimus is also younger in this series who were both played by Peter Cullen in the original series. But here, Ironhide is actually played by G1 veteran Corey Burton, who is best known for playing Spike and Shockwave in the original series, roles that he'd reprise in this series, as well as his main characters of Ratchet and Megatron. But hey, let's get on with this video. Apparently, Decepticon uprisings have been popping up all over the galaxy and the Elite Guard is returning back to Cybertron. And they're taking Optimus Prime and his Autobots with them. Yeah, but sir, what about the Decepticons on this planet? Sentinel Prime informs me there are no Decepticons on this planet. Sari is obviously upset about her friends being taken away from her. As we saw in the last episode, they're the closest thing she has left to a family now that her dad is missing. Sentinel Prime wants Optimus to lie about the Allspark and Megatron, but Optimus refuses. What? You can't be serious! I'm not gonna have to use the stasis cuffs on you, am I, Optimus? Whoa there, Sentinel. There are kids watching. What you and Optimus like to do in private is your own personal business. No need to flash your toys around in front of other bots. Elsewhere in Detroit, Starscream is waking up in a pile of garbage which seems kind of fitting for him. Starscream swears revenge against Megatron as we transition to the Decepticons base, where we see them discussing their new signal dampers, which hide their energy signatures while they're in vehicle mode, which their prisoner, Professor Sumdak, has created for them, no doubt under duress. This totally reminds me of how in Beast Wars, and even more so in Beast Machines, the Maximals' energy signatures would be hidden from enemy scanners when they were in their beast modes. Hmm, I wonder where they got that idea. Could it possibly have anything to do with the fact that Marty Eisenberg was a writer and story editor on both Beast Machines and Transformers Animated? Back with the Autobots, they're looking for someone to look after Sari when they leave. And with little to no other option, they choose Captain Fanzone. Aww, now I kind of wish we got to see a little bit of Sari and Captain Fanzone together being kind of a foster daughter and father. Oh man, what if the Autobots did leave at the end and Sari was the only one left to defend Detroit against the supervillains? Do you think she would have become a superhero like Batgirl or something like that? So Blitzwing and Lugnut somehow managed to tunnel underneath the Elite Guard ship and steal their tachyon transmitter without raising any kind of alarm. What kind of shoddy sensors do they have on this ship? But they are followed home by Starscream. Starscream, you're alive. What's the matter? You look like you've seen a ghost. Get it? Because of Starscream's ghost in G1? Is that the best you could do, Starscream? And to think you actually believed you could take over as leader of the Decepticons. You couldn't lead a parade. I think Starscream could lead a parade. It just depends on what kind of parade. Heck, he could probably make a rainbow out of all the different colored Seekers there are. So, they throw Starscream's body out, 
And we learn that though his spark chamber may be empty, Starscream still functions. Thanks to a shard of the Allspark embedded in his forehead. A piece of the Allspark. Indestructible, inextinguishable, which makes little old Starscream immortal. Again, this is obviously a clear homage to G1 Starscream and his immortal, indestructible spark. Although in this cartoon, Starscream doesn't actually have an immortal spark, obviously, since his spark is missing. He's simply being resurrected by the Allspark fragment in his head. So does that technically make Starscream a zombie? He doesn't have a spark, which is like the Transformers version of a soul. So has the real Starscream actually passed on, and this is just his reanimated lifeless corpse, walking and talking as if it were the real Starscream? Eh, that's a philosophical debate for another video. On with this review. So we see through a montage, with Megatron's speech dubbing over it, Starscream repeatedly trying to assassinate Megatron, and repeatedly failing. As comical as this is, I do kind of wish that we could have got to see some of the other Decepticons that are listening to Megatron's speech across the galaxy. It would have made for some nice cameos. Back on board the Elite Guard ship, Ultra Magnus and Jazz rush to investigate an Allspark Fragment energy signature. But when Optimus discovers that it's a trap set by Starscream, he urges Sentinel to warn them, who in turn just threatens Optimus with the stasis cuffs again. So keep your audio unit shut or I'll do it for you. Now, now, boys, there will be plenty of playtime for that later. Right now, you've got to help Ultra Magnus and Jazz. You put me in stasis lock? When I get through with you, Optimus, there won't be enough left to salvage for parts! Meanwhile, Sari and Captain Fanzone are laying some ground rules. In fact, I think I should be able to stay up as late as I want. I also need my own phone. Oh yeah, and we should talk about my allowance, because I'm going to need a big one. This is why I hate kids. Aww, so cute. See, I wish we got to see more of this. The Allspark fragment is going to overload the vehicle's engine. We must remove it before the entire thing explodes. <laughs> Jazz, stand back! So your first instinct is to hit it? Do they not teach you anything about bomb disposal at Autobot Academy? But thanks to Team Optimus, they recover the Allspark fragment, rescue the passengers, and stop the train from crashing. And after Starscream gets blown out of the sky by Megatron, he lands in the laps of the Autobots. And with a little teamwork between Optimus and Sentinel, they manage to capture Starscream. The Elite Guard depart from the Earth, with Starscream in custody, leaving it up to Optimus' team to search for the remaining Allspark shards, and to deal with any Decepticons that they may find along the way, thus giving us the overall plot of this season. And we end with Megatron also expositing his plans to conquer Cybertron. Overall, I thought this was a great episode of Transformers Animated. It's interesting that Starscream wakes up on a garbage scow. For one thing, with him having been dead, I can't help but be reminded of the boat on the River Styx, which would carry lost souls to the underworld in Greek mythology. I wonder if this was meant as a subtle reference to that. Also, seriously, they had a Decepticon's body and they literally threw him out with the trash. You mean to tell me that Porter C. Powell didn't try to pull a KSI and tried to get Starscream's body and use it to create more technology? Again, I thought this was a really good episode. What about you? What did you think of this episode of Transformers Animated? As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you next week for the next episode of Transformers Animated. Garbage in, garbage out. See you then.